Okay, so uh, Professor Full a, is a friend. He's a fellow roboticist, and uh, he's a professor of biology. He has a brand new result, which was just announced in the New York Times uh, as of, uh, I think, yesterday. Thank you. Um, as Ken said, I'm a biologist in integrated biology here and a joint appointment in electrical engineering and uh, computer science. I will definitely talk about the response end of earthquakes, but I think Ken selected me in part because I sort of represent uh, the diversity of faculty in different disciplines that are working on um, fundamental research questions that certainly show that you never know where curiosity-based research will lead. So I'll show you an example of that with respect to bio-inspired robots. I'm also the founder and director of our center, CYBER, the Center for Interdisciplinary Biological Inspiration in Education and Research, focusing on how we learn from nature. And as Ken mentioned, I'm part of the new Citrus Initiative, People and in Robotics. Um, I experienced the Loma Prieta quake. In fact, I was coming home on BART because it was my wife's birthday. I was going to take her out for dinner. That didn't happen. Um, and as I stepped off Barth, the earthquake occurred. And then seeing the devastation afterwards uh, and uh, brave citizens and uh, first responders going into areas to try to find uh, survivors was an um, ex extraordinary memory for me as well as trying to get into rubble that results from uh, the earthquakes. I never imagined that, uh, although hoped, that research that I do on animals like this uh, could lead to a potential solution. So I study how animals move, including cockroaches, like you see here. That's the American cockroach of the stages. That's an eight-legged scorpion. There's a centipede running on a treadmill. There's an eight-legged sideways running crab, <laughs> fastest terrestrial invertebrate. And you should say, well, why do you study that? Well, this led to the inspiration of the design of the uh, most highly-legged, uh, mobile-legged robot called Rex, the robot hexapod, built with Dan Kodachek from uh, the University of Pennsylvania. It can go over two meters uh, per second. Uh, it's now commercialized with uh, Boston Dynamics that was purchased by uh, Google. You could buy Rex, but it's expensive. Uh, but it can go over um, 40 different uh, terrains and uh, can go where uh, wheeled and uh, tractor vehicles find it uh, quite difficult with respect to uh, maneuvering like this area mud, which is extremely challenging. We can imagine this one day uh, on this large scale as potentially assisting after a disaster. So this is uh, Rex. Um, imagine a swarm of them trying to gain information about what's happened with respect to certain areas, like maybe a subway. So here's Rex going down into a subway. And the question is then, could you quickly gain information about a potential uh, hazard so that you'd have more information quickly? It doesn't have to pay, of course. It's, it's helping you in a disaster. It's only fair. So, and uh, could you rapidly get information or even collect samples to get a sense of uh, what's happened with respect to that uh, overall uh, disaster? And so working with wonderful colleagues like, like Dan Kocek, they were able to make the robot uh, know that a stairs is there, and they're able to adjust it so that it can now uh, use a different kind of gate in order to uh, return a potential sample or any information that uh, it's gathered as it uh, entered the uh, structure. Now, as you can see, these robots are pretty big, uh, and, they're, uh, and, they're, and they're costly. Uh, but we think that these could certainly be beneficial. Um, we know that uh, dogs can actually confirm uh, uh, where survivors are, but they can't really locate them or dig them out. I heard today some, maybe some ground penetrating radar might be able to detect heartbeats. That's fascinating. Cameras and boroscopes are used, but they can only penetrate uh, so far. Um, and people can't get into a void smaller than about 20 centimeters or so, and certainly the the small scale, two to 10 centimeter size, has generally been out of reach for existing robots. Here's a robot uh, that has participated in uh, trying to understand uh, the structural uh, damage in the uh, World Trade Center. You can see here's a computer, so it's relatively 
a large robot. And there's like a whole range of different robots that uh, have participated. Well, we studied this animal to get inspiration since, as we know, despite the fact that it's, it's revolting, it can tell us secrets about going anywhere. And so here's the robot, here's the animal. It can, we tested it going through tiny spaces. We found that it can move through spaces the height of uh, two pennies by making an apparatus like this to do it. Here's the cockroach squeezing through that tiny space in real time. It can do it in less than a second. It compresses its body in by 50%. Uh, what's even more amazing is when it gets into that tiny space, we discover the following. If it's not in a confined space, that's real time and then it's slowed 20 times. They're very fast. They can run a meter and a half a second. 50 body lengths. If they're compressed a little bit, they still run pretty fast. The most amazing thing is when they're compressed in half, they can still run at 20 centimeters a second, equivalent to about 70 miles an hour if it's scaled up to human size. So incredible capability in doing this. We wondered how could their skeleton withstand this, and so we put them into a materials testing machine. No, no animal was hurt in the study. We actually measured them flying and running before and after. But what we showed is they can withstand eight to 900 times their body weight without any injury whatsoever. Can this, inspire, can this inspire a robot? And so working with my incredible engineering colleague here on campus, uh, Ron Fearing, he developed and pioneered a manufacturing technique called smart composite microstructuring, where basically you take the Alice exoskeleton, it's like origami, uh, you map out the skeleton, you um, laser cut it, you laminate it, you fold it up, and you get a robot. And so that's what we did. We looked very carefully at the cockroach anatomy and how its plates and tubes were connected by compliant membranes, and we were able to make this robot that we called CRAM, apologize for the name, crawling robot with articulated microstructures. Here's CRAM at its normal height, and here is when it's compressed, and here's how CRAM was uh, put together by my uh, graduate student, now postdoc at uh, Harvard, Kaushik Jararam. So here's the shell, here's the robot. So this is a very compliant robot that is simple and uh, relatively low cost. Here it is being compressed to the, the shell by a 20 pound uh, load. And here's the mechanism. So they do, it does exactly what the cockroaches do. So when they're compressed, their legs splay out to the side and they actually don't use their feet. They use their tibias, parts of, a different part of their leg, in order to keep traction as they move through uh, this compressed space. So fortunately, this kind of rapid prototyping, additive manufacturing, kind of the, the makerspace equivalent can do this. Here's a crown moving in an uncompressed uh, state of locomotion and what uh, we're able to do is make it move at high speeds even when it's compressed 50%. So this is a very early, I hesitate to even call it a prototype, early prototype of what's possible for a low cost robot for first responders. And we think that, of course, this approach can go far beyond even search and rescue and earthquakes to thinking about conservation, environmental monitoring, security, uh, structural inspection. Uh, we've talked to uh, people who've consulted with FEMA and especially helpful even for this presentation is our uh, co collaboration with Robin Murphy, who runs the Center for Assisted Search and Rescue uh, Robots. She's been uh, incredibly valuable. And I think that um, what I'll say is Ken has a great vision of one of the projects in People in Robotics, and that is focusing on shared cloud databases. This is his, from his paper, where we believe that ultimately we can get information about objects, the environment, and actions the robot can take, store them, share them broadly, and be able to quickly use them to decide what action a robot can do in order to uh, help in any kind of disaster. Thank you, and uh, please come and visit Cyber.